All the students in your classroom should have both successes and failures. Too often we have stigmatized failure. We have given a red X and expect students to cringe. Well, they do cringe. <laughs> Who wants a red X? We can do better than that. We can give students failure in the context of a story. For example, two numbers add to a third number. Uh-oh, you've been gooped. All students know what that word means if you describe it in that, word, in that way. It means you failed. But what a fun way to explain it. No. Oh, it exploded! It does. Super Spy Mika 7! Hey, oh, so no, not, no, not that one. No, you no. Icarus flies too high. His wings melt. He crashes into the sea and is killed. Oh, that's failure, but it's failure by a different name. It's failure that will motivate the student to try to save Icarus's life. Success is also important, but we want honest success. What does honest success look like? For many students, honest success means that they are the first ones to discover something. Now that's going to mean that they need to have an illusion of first-time discovery, because no grade 3, no grade 4 student is going to be discovering something for the first time. So you need to give them the illusion of first-time discovery. How do you do that? Most importantly, you manage classroom chaos so that the top kids don't know that they're the top. And the slower kids, they don't know that they're being slow. They don't know that this group over here, that they've already solved the problem 10 minutes ago. No, you want to manage it so that this group that's a bit slower, that's slow methodical thinkers, you protect them by not letting them know that they're slow. How do you do that? Well, a fast group solves something instead of saying, Oh, fantastic, we've got the winner! No, uh, you just gently slip them a new sheet of paper with a new puzzle on it. So what have you managed to do? Save him. Save his life. Whose life? This guy's life. Daedalus. Yeah, Daedalus. the father. Okay. So, do you think he's going to be a happy man? Yes. Okay, but have you saved his son's life? Not no, yet. Well, we will. <laughs> we can just do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, okay, go ahead. Show me. I don't think it's going to work. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Some parents try to help their gifted child by accelerating them through the math curriculum. This is usually the wrong idea. Instead, those children should stay with their peers and be challenged with progressively tougher problems and puzzles. Why? Number one reason, the spectrum of student ability, as it becomes larger, the class becomes less and less manageable to teach. You want to try to shrink down the standard deviation of student ability. That makes it easier to teach. That's a selfless reason for the parents. Now, the parents uh, are going to be saying, yes, but I want the best for my child. I also think it's the best for each individual child. Uh, unless they are geniuses, in which case they need to be taken right out of the classroom. Unless they're geniuses, they should stick with their peer group. And they should be shown progressively tougher problems until they start failing. You want to give students that, that experience of failure, even the top students. You don't want to say, oh, you've succeeded at that. Okay, go on to this next topic. Oh, you've succeeded at that. Okay, time to go on to the next topic. At some point, that is going to that, that route is going to come to a screeching halt. <laughs> it's much better to give students the experience of failure along the way of their education. In 2005, I took my first steps as an educator. I volunteered as the token mathematician at a math fair in a South Calgary school, Sundance Elementary School. Well, I walked into that school and I was blown away by the energy and enthusiasm surrounding mathematics. I wandered around for 20 minutes and I tried different student pro problems and puzzles and then I sat down in front of a grade 2 girl and she showed me a puzzle and I go, uh oh, <laughs> how am I going to tackle this? Well, the more befuddled 
and confused. I got. The broader her smile got. She knew that I was a token mathematician. And I just thought, this is the most marvelous gift to give a child. And I never looked back. Math Pickle is because of that anonymous child. I don't even know her name. So failure, humiliation in front of a grade two student, that's, that's great. We should express much more our failure in front of our students. So you can say, this is as far as I've got in this problem. I have no idea how to, how to proceed. I'm angry. Uh, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm oh, you guys are going to beat me at this. I, I, I do lie a, a lot in the classroom, but that was a truthful humiliation. <laughs> anyway, experiment in your classroom. Whenever you experiment, you are going to fail. You're going to try things that don't work. And good for you, because that's how you're going to become a stellar teacher.